first of all, um, just clarify, can the BP actually terminate this process? Um, I think the BP, um, of course, is the secretariat for the National Council on Privatization. Um, so the National Council on Privatization will make a final decision on anything that needs to be done. So really it's um, just a recommendation. Um, however, there is a, a process um, which BP is following mm -hmm. and uh, 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 probably within that process um, it's reached to a point where they've uh, saying that the second or the first reserve bidder has not paid um, what they were meant to pay mm -hmm. and therefore they will be recommending to the National Council that uh, these are the next steps. All right, and obviously the two next steps that's been um, put up forward right now is li liquidation and what some are calling negotiated sale. What are your thoughts on the way forward on this process? Because Bright Media, which you, and Fricrest is a part of the Bright Media Consortium, is, is a bidder that has bid $551 million, a lot of money in the context of this whole process to sell Nitel, something that has dragged on for so many years. If but I remember to come to the table and pay 551 million. That's a lot of good money for the government. Um, but liquidation is something that has been put forward as an option as well. What are your thoughts on where we go from here? Well, I, I think uh, really in, in trying to achieve anything, you must first be very clear as to what you're trying to, to achieve. And government needs to sit down and think deeply as to is it trying to, why, why is it selling Nitel? Is mm -hmm. it trying to make as much money as it can? or is it trying to uh, revitalize uh, NITEL so that it can participate in the continuous development of the, the telecoms industry in Nigeria and indeed the, the development of the country. Mm -hmm. And I think at the moment the, 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 the federal government has been a little bit unclear as to which of these is its primary objective and that's why it's kind of moved from side to side, um, sometimes going towards where the highest uh, amount of money has been possible and other times uh, kind of moving towards where, where there are opportunities to, to redevelop the, the business and, 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 and contribute to the industry. I think there have been many bidders and many uh, potential suitors have come to Nitel over the years. Mm -hmm. There was one from Orascom um, quite a few years back where she's a very uh, credible operator um, out of North Africa. They offered somewhere between, uh, I think, 250 to $300 million. Um, but at the time, the government felt it wasn't enough money and they wanted to get more from it. Um, and uh, now they're at this point where, a few years later, they still have the asset. Um, it's further deteriorated in terms of its quality. Um, and really, importantly, there's been a lost opportunity um, for the corporation as well as for the country in terms of, of, of what it could have done over mm -hmm. those years. And then let's discuss the question of value because just like you mentioned, Nitel has probably de deteriorated. Even from the time B uh, Brian Media put in its bid 18 months ago, one can argue that the telecom space has changed. In fact, m right now there is more focus on data as opposed to growing um, subscribers. And Nitel obviously has not kicked off at all in that regard. Is, is it still good value for you at $551 million? I, I think uh, when you're buying any asset or making any investment, uh, particularly in this space, there are, there are two or three things you're looking at. One is, of course, the assets that you're buying themselves. Um, those assets, of course, are the, uh, depreciating uh, every day, or at least not every day, certainly every year, they're, they're depreciating. Um, and also you're looking at the opportunity to be in that market. And, of course, uh, that opportunity is getting smaller each day because the existing operators are getting stronger and they're increasing their share. The market is becoming more penetrated, that is, is more people within the addressable market are uh, making use of the service. So any new entrant then has to go to fight to actually get them to give up what they have to come take uh, uh, something else. So yes, in, in many senses the value um, basically goes down um, um, over time and certainly the value today is not what it was uh, 12 months ago. Um, that said, uh, we believe that there's still uh, incredible uh, opportunity um, within the market, um, particularly as we move to a much more data-centric uh, data world um, and a data-centric uh, industry. Um, what is required within the data-centric in industry are the very assets that Nitel has, mm. which is uh, 
large amounts of long distance uh, high capacity uh, uh, networks that really reach most parts of the country and uh, also of course high capacity uh, uh, network into Europe and those assets are there there's a lot of investment that, that, that needs to be done in them and, and really last year there was perhaps still the same amount of investment that, that needs to be done in them. Um, however, the, the demand for those types of broadband services, mm -hmm. which uh, perhaps Nitel is, is best uh, placed to be able to provide, is increasing. So, so we, we feel there's still a strong business case. So in two in, words, in are you still here. interested? $551 million, if they called you to buy, would you pay? Um, of course, uh, we are part of a consortium and we have a number of investors. Uh, many of them are still very eager to, to go ahead with the transaction. And um, um, so the if, if we're simple able to answer be done is it, yes, course, possibly. Yes, All right.